Hello guys, Matthew here and welcome back again to the Tactic YouTube channel. As we are slowly more and more transitioning from your classic hard drives to SSDs at that consumer level, you can also notice that the offer of the external SSD models is also on the rise, one of the latest being this ADATAS SD700 model. This time I'll be turning things around and except your usual review I'll also do a guide on how to do a bootable USB Windows to go drive based on this external SSD. I'll also check out how it performs in that kind of environment, especially since this one promised to deliver decent figures. So if you're more interested in that, you can go ahead and skip this review. The guide starts at around four and a half minute mark. This model is aided as very small and compact external SSD drive, which is also before all very fast on account of the 3D NAND flash which it uses. In particular, this one has Micron's TLC 3D NAND flash combined with Silicon Motion's SM2258 controller. As you can see here, I have the 256 gigabyte version of it, which is actually the smallest one from that series. And except it, you can also get the 512 gigabyte and one terabyte model, last one being pretty pricey as you would guess, which is one of the reasons why the external SSD solutions in general aren't so popular among your average user, as the classical hard drive still beats it when it comes to value per gigabyte. Unfortunately, it doesn't use the latest USB Type-C interface, so you'll get that pretty bulky cable and connection port on the SSD's end and a classic Type-A end on the other end of the cable. It's a shame and I really wish they've implemented some kind of integrated cable since it's aiming to be practical on account of its small dimensions. Although it's a USB 3.1 interface in question, it's actually the Gen 1 version of it, which is basically, as we all know, equal to the USB 3.0 interface when it comes to bandwidth and that's 5 gigabits per second. The design of the chassis is pretty cool and sleek looking with a small LED activity indicator on the top. It seems to have an aluminium casing but unfortunately it's just a plain plastic shell in question. On the other hand it's protected by this rubber frame which also covers the connection port and shields it and the whole drive based on the claimed IP68 rating, meaning that it's waterproof, dustproof and can handle some drops. Speaking of the drops, I've sort of checked out that claim for myself Itself, not on purpose though. Yeah, that actually happened Linus Tech Tip style, an approximately 3 meter or 10 foot drop and to my surprise drive survived without a single serious scratch on it, just a small scuff on the edge and with it working as before after that drop. Yes, it's an SSD and they can take some serious beating, but still it was impressive and I'm glad to see that everything was perfectly fine, even in an extreme scenario like this one. If nothing else, this was definitely the drop test. One that was not planned, but still a drop test. Taking it for a spin, in terms of the performance, SD700 delivers on the claimed speed, just above 400 megabytes per second for sequential read speeds and up to 360 megabytes per second on the write speeds, or around 300 megabytes per second in practice when you're doing a straight up copying of a large file to it, as you can see it here, which is a bit less than what they claimed, but then again it's the smallest capacity model in question, so that's probably the reason why it's on the slower side compared to the claimed. 430 megabytes per second for the write speed. All I basically did my full run of benchmarking, don't be too concerned about performance in other fields. This is an external drive after all, so linear and sequential speeds are what matters the most, as you'll probably just be doing medium to large file size backuping. Although I didn't encounter a lot of external SSDs, judging by what I saw here, this seems to be a pretty reasonable product. Maybe it's not on par performance-wise with the mainstream budget examples of internal 2.5-inch SSDs, but it offers an interesting format and decent figures considering that it will serve a purpose of an external drive for data backup or data transitioning. And now let's make that Windows to go bootable USB stick happen. To start off you'll need a total of 4 different things, 2 being software utilities, the G Image X and Rufus, you can find links for them in the description box down below together with all other DOS commands which I will be using. 
And you'll also need two different drives, one for the Windows to go USB drive, the final product, which will in my case be 8.8 as SD700 external SSD, and one for mounting the Windows installation ISO file on it, your regular USB stick, like this Corsair that I have here. I assume you are all pretty much familiar with this last one, as that's nowadays a standard way of installing Windows on your PC configuration or notebook via the bootable Windows installation USB drive, which in the end replaced your optical disk and installing Windows using them. I would suggest you get at least a 16GB USB stick, as 8GB won't be enough this time, you'll see later on why. You can create that bootable Windows installation USB drive using Microsoft's own download utility, which can also create a bootable installation drive for you right after it's finished with download, or you can just use an application like Rufus if you already downloaded or have that Windows ISO file from before. In my case I've downloaded the Windows 1064-bit ISO using that utility from Microsoft's website and used Rufus to create a bootable USB Windows installation drive instead of using that feature in the Microsoft utility itself. You can do it either way, it doesn't matter, I just chose this one because I wanted to keep that ISO file as otherwise it gets dumped in a temporary folder. Plug in your main external drive on which we are going to install and run Windows from, in my case that was ADADAS SD700. Run the command prompt as an administrator, type disk part in one word, hit enter, type list disk, hit enter again, and take a good look which drive corresponds to it. Once you've identified that drive, you can go into disk manager and double check just to be sure, select it with select disk 5 in my case, hit enter, then type clean, hit enter again, type create partition primary, hit enter, you can cancel the format process for now, then type select partition 1, hit enter, then type active, enter again, and that's it, you can exit now. You can format it using NTFS file system and after that I advise you to replug the drive before we continue cause sometimes it can show a drive letter although it's not actually assigned. Now you can assign a letter if it didn't already cause as I said sometimes it doesn't do that so you will have to do it yourself otherwise it won't show in my computer under drives. After you are done with that you can open up the gmhx application and go under the apply tab, go to source and go to that bootable drive with windows installation on it, in my case that was the Corsair's USB stick, and open up sources folder. With the newer version of windows ISOs, like for example this latest version of 64-bit windows 10, downloaded from microsoft website, you won't see the necessary install.wim file, which you have to choose for the source file, so you can do its thing and install windows on the Windows to go drive which is in my case ADATAS SD700. There is an install file but it's an ESD file type of one so you'll have to do one more step and that's to transform that ESD into a WIM type of file. Open up again command prompt as an administrator, navigate to that source folder on that bootable USB Windows installation drive. In your case it will probably be a different drive letter, so mind that, as for my Corsair USB stick, that was E drive, type in this command and hit enter. It will finish fast. Right after that type in the second command, you can also copy it from the description box down below and hit enter. It can take some time depending on your USB performance, let it finish completely, don't do anything, even if it says 100%, it needs to write completed below and let you type in commands again. This will basically create and extract that install.wim file that you need from that install.esd file on the same bootable USB stick with Windows installation on it. This is also why I suggested the bigger 16GB USB stick for the bootable Windows installation USB drive, since with this extraction it takes just a bit over 8GB of capacity, so the 8GB USB stick wouldn't be enough. After that you can again go to gimagex, choose the install wim file under source and under destination you need to choose that usb windows to go drive which will hold the complete windows installation, here that was my ADATA SD700 external ssd. Again in my case it was pretty fast but if you have slower drives it can take up to few minutes. This basically does the process of windows setup install on an empty drive from that usb stick with windows installation on it, just like your regular example of doing a fresh windows install on a pc or a notebook. 
After that's finished, there's one more thing that's left to be done and that's to create a bootable instruction set on it so it can actually be booted as a regular internal primary drive which usually holds your operating system. Again, open up command prompt as an administrator, navigate to your Windows to go drive, then go to system32 folder and after that type in this command and hit enter. Again, be careful what drive letter is used in your case, it's very likely to be different than mine for my ADATA SD700 that was the L drive. And that's it, you're finally done. This seemed like a lot of stuff to do, but at the end it's not so complicated after you do it for the first time. Now you can finally plug that drive into a PC or notebook and boot directly from it into a freshly installed Windows environment. If you don't have any system drives already attached, it will probably boot right away, like in my case where I disconnected all of my system drives for my benchmarking rig. Or you can just press F12 during post and bring up the boot menu and choose it manually. After I did my initial boot with updating the windows and driver installation, I went in to get a better feel from this setup. Based solely on the boot time, you couldn't tell that you're running windows straight from external drive via USB. Everything seemed to be perfectly normal and fast, very responsive, no lag or stutter whatsoever. Just like in your regular scenario where you would have an internal 2.5 inch SSD. I also went in to load it up a bit capacity wise and after installing some games and doing some measurements, it turned out to be comparable to my recent review of also ADATA's SU900 Ultimate SSD. Really impressive and before all handy if you need to have a working environment of your own which needs to be moved around with maximal ease. This would probably not be the case where you would use a classical USB stick with your average read and write performance, although it would be doable and you could work with it, it wouldn't be as near as fast as this kind of setup. That's it guys for this time from me, thank you once again for watching, feel free to toss me a thumbs up if you like what you saw, that really helps me a lot, leave a comment down below if you have any questions about a product or if you want to leave your suggestions, and of course feel free to subscribe for content further down the line, or you can check out some of my other videos from before. Until then, catch you later guys!